Today you heard teaching about the life principle that says, fight your battles on your knees and you'll win every time. God wants His children to talk with Him continuously. But many people still wrestle with how and why we should pray. And here's a question from Felicia, and she writes, I have struggled with prayer for about two years or so. I've watched many people pray for their loved ones only to lose them. My question is, why pray? God is sovereign. His will always comes to pass. Is praying just to prepare us to accept His will as it happens and to leave all the consequences under His control? Is prayer just an avenue to keep us from living with stress and worry? Please help me understand. Well, let me say, first of all, praying does help us as you ask the question here when it comes to stress and worry. But let me ask you this question. Why do you pray? Why should anyone pray? And so we could say, well, it certainly is encouraging to us and no question about that. Probably the popular reason why most people pray is to get something from God. That's their primary reason for praying. But the question is, what is the primary reason for that? The primary reason you and I should pray is to build our intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father. That's first and foremost. He's going to take care of all these other things. But that is number one. Of course, there are other reasons. We pray for guidance, for example. We pray for God to meet our needs, and all of these are legitimate. We pray for our concern for other people. We also pray for our influence, the impact that we can have on other people. Now, each one of these is biblical. Nothing wrong with asking for God to give us these things, but primarily, first motivation is to get to know Him and to build a relationship because He does want to speak to us. And as we pray, what happens? Oftentimes, our heart is comforted over something that we've been dealing with. We're encouraged greatly when we pray and know in our heart that He's listening. Sometimes we're convicted of our sin. And you know, if you don't pray, you're going to try to avoid that conviction. But praying empowers us. Whatever God has called you to do, I can tell you as a pastor for 52 years, the most powerful thing that goes on in my life is the time I spend with Him. I wouldn't dare think about trying to prepare a message without prayer, nor would I ever walk up on a platform unless I know that my heart is prepared, and most of all, that I've prayed about it, and God and I are in oneness of mind and heart thought about it. Well, His will is not always going to come to pass. Now, you mentioned in this that uh, you believe that His will will always come to pass. It's just a matter of preparing us for it. Not really. Because you see, if a person sins against God, sinning against God is not his will. And therefore, if a person chooses to walk outside of his will, disobey him, the will of God is not being done. For example, let's say that you're a college student and you're a Christian. You say, you know what? I'm just going to quit college. This is not what I want to do in life. And I think I'm just going to take it easy and I'll find something to do. That's not the will of God. Or here's a young lady who gets pregnant at the age of 16. Is that the will of God? No, it's not. Could she have avoided that? Yes, she could have. And then I think about all the people who are in financial bondage. You knew better than to get yourself in debt, but you did it anyway. Was that the will of God? No, it was not. So you can't say that everything is the will of God and some hats all going to work out. The Bible does not teach that. And the Scripture says, you have not because you ask not, or, he says, it may be that you ask amiss, you ask for the wrong thing. Now, when it comes to people dying that you've prayed for, all of us one of these days are going to meet the Lord. And sometimes we understand, sometimes we do not. Sometimes we think it was too early. Sometimes we think maybe that uh, if they'd have died ahead of time or beforehand or something, have you thought about it, uh, things would have been better. But God will call us when it is His will. Do we always understand His will when it comes to life and death? No, we do not. But one thing for certain, if you and I walk in His will and obey Him, that's going to be life at its best no matter what happens. Now, you ask the question, why pray? Let me just say this to you. You don't pray, you're going to drift. I don't care who you are. You don't pray, you drift. And before long, you will have backslidden. You'll find yourself away from God as far as your personal relationship to Him because the truth is prayer is a vital part. 
Prayer and the Word of God, is a, they, they are vital parts of our Christian life. When you cease to pray, you begin to drift. And when you begin to drift, your relationship, your intimacy, your thoughts about God, everything begins to be confusing. If you love Him, you will talk to Him. You will desire to talk to Him and to have fellowship with Him. And if you talk to Him and listen to Him, you're going to grow. And there's one other thing I would mention about that. If you talk to Him and listen to Him and you're growing in your Christian life, God is going to use you. We are His servants. And the closer we walk with Him, the more intimate we are with Him, the more He's going to use us to be a blessing to other people. Well, thanks for joining us today on In Touch, and please keep sending us those emails. I look forward to answering them. And next week, we'll bring you more teaching from the 30 Life Principles. And until then, if you want life at its best, remember to obey God and leave all the consequences to Him. You say, well, you say that every week. You know why? Because if you obey Him and leave all the consequences to Him, you will discover life at its very best.